Hello folks, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Finally we can carry on with our mission series. And um, the first video we're doing, uh, well the, the second video we're doing in this series now is docking. So today we are going to be doing some docking uh, in this one called Let's Dock. Um, this uh, spacecraft you can see flying up here very quickly because I've got it uh, sped up is our docking target. Obviously in order to be able to dock we need to have something to dock with. Uh, and that's what this is. This is our docking target. So this is going up into orbit very, very quickly because it's sort of sped up to about 600% of its original speed. Um, basically, we just got a standard sort of rocket here, just getting rid of the boosters, and we're just heading up to a relatively low orbit. Uh, this vehicle just consists of um, uh, just a sort of very simple set of docking port on the front, some RCS thrusters, RCS fuel, fuel tank engine, um, you know, stabilizers and all that kind of stuff, remote control units. Um, very simple vehicle and we're just going to literally stick it up there in a relatively circular orbit mm. uh, which will uh, allow us to have something to aim for and that's what we're going to do very shortly. So there we go, vehicles in orbit. So let's get ready to send our actual craft up. Okay, well this is a vehicle that we've built for this uh, mission, and in fact this is going to be our kind of standard crew vehicle. Um, it's quite a nice little one actually, it's quite sophisticated, quite complicated, uh, probably a bit over-engineered, but hey, you know, who cares. Uh, right, so this is basically going to go up into orbit. The way we're going to do this is, uh, first thing we need to do is um, match ourselves up with our target, which is obviously already up in space, and quite conveniently happens to be roughly in the right spot. So if we set that as target, uh, and just bring this up. You can see the little target marker now in the nav ball. Um, and it is about to pass over the top of us, actually. It's on a 86 by 83 thousand meter orbit, so that's what we need to aim for. We need to aim for 86. Um, best time to launch is when it's just gone over the top of us. So, what we'll do, we'll just time accelerate a little bit just so it can pass over the top of us and I am probably going to say when it's roughly kind of there. So come back out in time acceleration, let's put that throttle up to maximum, turn on stability control and let's get ourselves off the pad. Okay so as you can see it flies off like a bullet out of a gun. Let's tilt this over very slightly going to need to throttle this down, otherwise it's just going to go absolutely mental. Let's just hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. It's not very easy to steer this thing in low. It's got a bit of a wobble going on. It's not as stable as some of my other vehicles are. Because I haven't been able to put as many struts and things on here. I don't know. I'm going to have to throttle it down even more! This is uh, ridiculous. Okay, so going insanely fast. We don't really want to go over 200 below 10,000 metres. We're actually doing over 300 metres per second. <laughs> so let's get ourselves tilted a little bit further. Now, I have to be honest with these, I am using Kerbal Engineer and uh, I am sort of controlling what I'm doing with Kerbal Engineer, matching up what I'm doing with Kerbal Engineer. Okay, so I'm fairly sure you don't want to watch that all the way up. You've seen me uh, put things into orbit before, so we're going to speed through the rest of it. Uh, yeah, this is my sort of standard crew vehicle. It's just going to head up and intercept uh, with our uh, uh, docking target probe, just getting rid of the launch escape tower and uh, sort of sending this up to a roughly similar but slightly lower orbit. Uh, and all of that will become clear in a moment as we get ready to separate the, uh, the top stage of the rocket. I've run out of fuel. That's a rather spectacular display of mayhem. And let's get this throttled up to max. So this is the, this is the final stage of the rocket that's going to push us into orbit, which we are very nearly doing. So I'm going to push this up until the, the apparatus hits 83 at which point our periapsis should also be uh, above the 70 mark, so standing by with my uh, finger on the cut button, one, two, three, oh, very nearly, hang on, we just need to go a little bit further and we shall cut there. Okay, so, uh, we can now ditch this upper stage of the rocket, which um, I would rather do now, because it has some 
rocket someone to fire it retrograde and that should push it back down into the atmosphere and burn it up. Trying to, you know, we don't want to leave uh, debris up here. We're trying, to be, uh, we're trying to be tidy and responsible spacefaring citizens. Okay, so now we are up in orbit. Let's just have a quick look at where we are. Um, as you can see, as it currently stands at the moment, at intercept one, we're going to be 353 uh, kilometers behind. I'm actually tempted to leave it in this orbit and just kind of see how this pans out. Um, and when we go past the interception mark. So let us deploy our solar panels. Oops, one of them isn't on the action key. That's fine, we'll do that manually. I've got those. Uh, I've got solar panels set up on an action key um, so that I can just press a button and deploy them. Obviously one of them isn't on the action key, so we just need to sort that out. And I'm going to roll this over. I'm going to turn the RCS off because this actually can manoeuvre quite well um, without, without that because it's got reaction wheels on it. But I'm just going to roll it so that we are actually uphill and uh, there we go. So that is our little, uh, I do call it Apollo, our little uh, not quite so Apollo, Apollo spacecraft. It's called Apollo 3v2, is what I'm calling it. Because I based all of my spacecraft on the Apollo vehicle, that's uh, that's why. Okay, so we are well, kind of just now waiting to see what happens. So let's centre this and time accelerate as fast as we can. And let's see how much we close the gap on this orbit. Actually, I think we're, we're doing pretty well at the moment, so let's let's keep going with this. So what we're trying to do, you can see these these two little markers here. Uh, that's where the target's going to be, and the target's the docking probe, the docking target that we're trying to catch up with, and that's where we're going to be in relation to it when it goes past that marker. So basically, we want these two to, to line up or get to within about 10 kilometers if we can. So keeping ourselves on a slightly smaller orbit, which is what we are doing, we're on a slightly smaller orbit than our target is. Our target is in yellow, and our orbit's in blue. You can see we're on a slightly smaller orbit. That means we go a little bit faster, and we catch it up a little tiny bit at a time, which is kind of how we want to do it, because if we catch up too quickly, we're just going to end up missing it. So we just want to just let this keep going round. It's going to take some time for this, for this orbit to work. We're going to have to do several orbits. Okay, so as we speed up our time acceleration, basically what we're doing, uh, we're just letting our our vehicle catch up with our target probe. We're on a lower orbit, so we're going to be travelling faster. We'll catch it up, and as you see, each time we go around, we get a little bit closer. Uh, so that's basically what we're doing. We're just going to let it go around and round and round and round and round until we nearly catch it up, which is about to happen. Okay, so we're coming up to what's going to be our sort of final pass. On this pass, we've been losing about 45 kilometers per orbit. On this pass, uh, obviously then our target's going to go behind us, so we're going to fly past it. But what we're going to do is do a little bit of a prograde burn as we go past the intersect marker, so just to uh, reduce um, the amount of... Um, that we're going to sort of skip. Uh, catch up on the next orbit so we don't overtake it. So if we... I'm going to try and do this with the RCS. Uh, I'm actually in target. I don't, uh, I don't want to be in target, I want to be in orbit. I want to be prograde to the orbit. There we go. That's what we want. What we actually want is the prograde and the target markers to line up when we get close enough, but right now what we want to do is, is just try and get them a bit closer. Uh, let's just time it a little bit more because we're fair distance behind. What we're going to do, we'll turn on RCS when we get there, which is going to be kind of now-ish. Turn on RCS, I'm going to try and do this with RCS if I can, but I've got my finger on the button to do the main engine if I need to. Okay, so right on now-ish, we'll just do a little bit of a burn, just to, there we go. So what's the gap then? 1.1 kilometers, pretty much perfect. So what we're now going to do, we're 1.1 kilometers. So next time we're going to pass, it's going to be 1.1 kilometers ahead of us. So we're pretty much spot on. So if we come back out again, and if we just time accelerate around this orbit, okay, I can't really faster than that. Let's just do a 50 times time accelerate. And because we've changed our orbit, we're now getting a second intersection. But don't worry about that. This is the one that counts. We're going to be 1.1 kilometers away. 
So in theory, in a minute, well, we'll switch over to, uh, to target mode now. You can see our speed relative to the target is dropping. And when we get sort of to our target marker, we're going to need to do a retrograde burn to slow ourselves to a stop in relation to the target. So if we just come out of time acceleration, and I'm going to come out of map mode, and we'll come back to our actual vehicle mode. And uh, in theory, we should be able to find the target ahead of us somewhere in our orbit. Where's it going to be? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Okay, so what we want to do, as we're kind of getting quite close to it now, uh, very shortly we're going to want to do a retrograde burn, which I'm going to do with the main engine, which will slow us down and stop us in relation to the target. You'll see now that the on the nav ball, the target, uh, the, the speed indicator is now target rather than orbit. So this is now showing us information. The nav ball is now set relative to the target rather than our orbit. So what we're now going to do, I'm going to burn the engine. And we're in retrograde hold mode. And we're going to slow ourselves to a complete standstill in relation to the target. And we're just going to spin ourselves around and actually try and bring us to a complete stop. And there we go. So now turn off RCS. The reason for that is it stops us from getting too much excess motion that uh, basically screws the whole thing up. So what we now want to do is point ourselves directly at the target, which is the purple marker. And we want to, we can actually go into target hold mode. So we'll do that. And uh, we need to thrust ourselves forward. Again, click the RCS back on, thrust ourselves towards the target. And keep doing it until we're sort of around about five meters per second, just keep thrusting, until the speed is around about five meters per second. There we go. Okay, so we've now on the nav ball got these two markers. We've got this purple one, which is the, the target, and we've got this uh, yellow one, which is our prograde marker. What we want is for those two to line up. The only thing is, at the moment, we're just aiming for the docking target. We're not actually aiming for the docking port. So I'm actually just going to hang fire until we get a little bit closer. But this is where we start to use our translation controls. So we can uh, sort of translate ourselves around. So we're going to do a little bit of a rotation just so that we're sort of, well, on the nav ball we're lined up anyway, which is kind of going to be that. Um, and then we're going to try and do ourselves a little bit of a translation move. And you can see as I do these sort of translations, you can see that program marker moving. And that's what we want to do, basically. We want to move that prograde marker to line it up perfectly with that docking target marker, like that. And we want to keep those two lined up. So as you approach, you'll need to keep doing these translation maneuvers with the RCS until you get there. But obviously at the moment, we don't know what we're actually aiming for, whether we're going to hit the actual docking port itself or whether we're just going to hit the docking target probe somewhere randomly. Uh, but for now we'll just keep aiming for it. Until we get to probably within about 100 metres then we should be able to tell where we are. And again just keep adjusting it with the translation controls. So we'll just keep firing these translation controls just to keep these two markers lined up. This is how we do it. Well this is how I do it. It's one of several ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. And as you can see, our speed relative to the target is dropping. So we're now only doing 3.7 meters per second, but that's fine because eventually when we get close to the target, we are going to want to stop um, and sort of work out where we are in relation to the actual docking port uh, because we're going to need to make some adjustments. Okay, so we are uh, lined up with the docking target probe. Um, but we are kind of behind it, so we need to fly around it and get ourselves lined up with the actual docking port on front. So what we're going to do, first things first, I'm just going to rotate myself around so that I'm in a sort of slightly more logical plane, so that I can get my uh, translation controls to do what I expect them to do, so I'm going to roll myself around like that. Uh, I'm also going to now uh, kick ourselves sideways slightly, so you'll notice we're out of target hold and back into ordinary stability assist. So let's uh, kick ourselves slightly over to the side. Take us up to about one meter per second and just fly well past the probe. We don't want to risk hitting it. So just sort of visually keep an eye on it and make sure that we are going past. 
Okay, and then fire back in the other direction to bring us to a stop. So we can go back into station keeping. Oh, it's damn it. Okay, so what we now want to do is kick ourselves forward. So if we just throw ourselves forward. So kind of open. I'm just going to do a little bit of translation just to get those two, the program marker lined up with the crosshairs. So that when we do our reverse thrust maneuver in a moment to stop ourselves, we are actually going to come to a stop. So let's just make sure we fly way past the, the, the probe. I'm just going to keep going until that distance starts to go up again, which it should do in a second, I think. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's bring ourselves to a stop. We're about 20 meters away from the from the target. So back in station keeper with the target. As you can see, we're facing in the wrong direction. So what we're now going to do, uh, we're going to select the docking port itself. So right click on the actual docking port and just select set as target. So now the docking port itself is the target that shows up in here. I'm going to turn off the RCS and I'm just going to spin myself around. Just do a little bit of a rotate again so that we can make sure. So that we're sort of visually roughly lined up with where we want to be. Okay, so what we now need to do, um, first thing I need to do, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of reverse thrust. And the reason for that is that I am creeping a little bit close to the target. I just want to stop that from happening for a second just so that we can line ourselves up properly. Okay, so we're roughly lined up with the target. If we just do a little bit of an extra rotate round, we're roughly lined up now with the target. Vaguely straight. Okay. So, what we now need to do is do a translate until we are pretty much spot on lined up with the target. And you can see that target, the target marker is moving over. We want that target marker to line up with the, sort of the crosshairs, if you like. So that's what we're aiming to do. And we are roughly there, so we'll just bring ourselves to a stop. Okay, and we'll. Oh, it's having problems getting this to absolutely dead stop. Okay, so you can see now that we are virtually lined up with the docking target. We're a little bit high, so what I'm going to do to get around that, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a downward thrust. And again, I'm just going to bring it to a stop as close as I can okay so what I'm now going to do I'm going to go into target hold mode so that is now going to point our nose directly at the docking target and you can see that our sort of progo vector or retrograde as it is is slightly off so I'm just going to do a couple of little translation maneuvers to uh, line ourselves up so let's do a forward thrust so we've got a clear forward movement and then we just want to do some little thrusting maneuvers just to get everything lined up perfectly. There we are. So everything's perfectly aligned. All three of those markers are now lined up, and we look to be heading directly for the target. We're coming in very, very slowly, but we are heading straight for the target. We just put a little bit of extra forward thrust on, we can we can go a little bit quicker. And you can see we're pretty much dead straight lined up with the target now. And we're going to dock nice and smoothly. And there we have it. Okay, so there we go. So that is our first docking in space. And obviously now we take control of everything on both vehicles. So let's turn off the RCS. We don't need that anymore and if I turn lights and things on you'll notice the lights on the docking target turn on and off as well so we're in full control of both docked vehicles so there we go so if we had other crew modules inside this we could transfer a crew over um, and we can transfer fuel and resources across and things like that but uh, obviously we don't need to so there we go so there is a docking so that's how we do a basic docking um, and just to finish this mission, why not? Let's uh, let's go and uh, undock and deorbit. So um, undocking, relatively straightforward. Obviously, what we want to do, we want to do a nice smooth undocking. So let's just rotate ourselves around. Um, so we're facing prograde, and we are going to 
uncouple ourselves and then thrust away from our dock vehicle. So if we uh, right-click on the docking port, you can see we've got the option to undock. So we'll undock, and as you can see, we have now separated. And if I fire my RCS back up into a reverse firing, we'll fly away from the docking vehicle. And I'm just going to do that for a few seconds to get ourselves well clear. It's no longer a docking target uh, because we've we've already completed our manoeuvre, so you'll notice we've got the orbital information back now. Just want to get ourselves well away from it. And now we're going to have a look at just coming back down again. Now, I'm not actually too fussed on where we land as long as we land on the daylight side, so let's just go ahead and uh, just speed round. And yes folks, there we have it. So mission completed, uh, we've done our docking, we've done our, undo uh, uh, our undocking, I'll get my teeth in, uh, and we are now bringing our vehicle back down for a fairly simple uh, sort of re-entry uh, and landing. Just uh, undocking from the service module, uh, obviously this is all sped up quite a lot, um, and we're just coming through the atmosphere uh, to re-enter. Quite a slow re-entry, but uh, we are coming in nonetheless. Heat shield's doing its job protecting us. Slightly different vehicle to the one I did in the first video, uh, which kind of tumbled this time. I managed to keep it upright, and we're heading in for a relatively normal landing. So there we go. So that's how we do a docking. Fairly basic docking, but you'll soon get the hang of it once you've done about 40, 50, 60 of them doing a space station build or something like that. So thank you very much again for watching, and I shall join you again very, very soon for a bit more Kerbal Space Program. Uh, but I will say, um, stay tuned, because um, it gets embarrassing in a minute. See you again soon. Okay, so we're now lined up. Now we want to thrust forward. And we want to get ourselves back into a uh, docking target hold mode. And then we just want to translate ourselves until we're lined up again. Okay, we're not quite lined up, but this should, 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 should dock. It's not going to, is it? I'm going to look like a bit of an idiot. Is that going to dock? No, that didn't dock. Oh, hang on. It might dock. It might dock. It might dock. This isn't as smooth as I would have liked, in brutal honesty. If I do that, that might just. Uh, She's sorely tempted to go back to the last um, and comically I couldn't separate the two vehicles there. They just wouldn't have it. <laughs> okay, if we go forward again now. Well, I've made a bit of a pig's ear of this, so what I'm going to do is reload the last quick save and pretend that never happened.